Hey everybody, welcome to Tuesday Mana. I'm excited to get into the Word with you once again. Um, will you guys pray with me as, as we jump into this? Lord, we want to thank you for your grace, for your mercy, for loving us. And God, we just ask that your Word would speak to us, that you would open up our eyes, our hearts, and just to receive um, what you have for us, because we know that you want to speak to us personally. So we thank you in Jesus' name. Amen. So today we're using that. We're going to talk about the H word, hypocrites. Did you know in the Gospels, Jesus says the word hypocrite 23 times? And 21 out of those 23 times, who do you think it was directed to when he called people hypocrites to use that word? Do you think it was directed to the woman who was caught in adultery? I mean, obviously, this would be a good time to use that word hypocrisy, right? To call somebody a hypocrite. But he didn't call her a hypocrite. He didn't use that word there. Well, what about the crook tax collector? That obviously is a good place to use the word hypocrite for him to call this person a hypocrite, right? Actually, he didn't call the crook tax collector a hypocrite either. Here, let's read from the Gospels. This is a great breakdown of what a hypocrite actually is. According to Jesus, let's see what he says straight out of the mouth of Jesus. Luke 18, 9 through 14. He also told this parable to some who trusted in themselves that they were righteous and treated others with contempt. Two men went up into the temple to pray, one of a, one a Pharisee and the other a tax collector. The Pharisee, standing by himself, prayed like this. God, I thank you that I am not like other men, extortioners, unjust, adulterers or even like this tax collector i fast twice a week i give tithes of all that i get but the tax collector standing far off would not even lift up his eyes to heaven but beat his breast saying god be merciful to me i am a sinner i tell you that this man went down to his house justified rather than the other for everyone who exalts himself will be humbled but the one who humbles himself will be exalted you see jesus said hypocrites 23 times 21 out of those 23 times were directed to the pharisees and the sadducees those who thought they were more righteous because of their actions or their deeds than other people verse 9 actually says that this that it says that it was for those who trusted in their own righteousness and looked down upon others. See, when Jesus was talking about hypocrisy, he's talking to those who, who kind of look the part but don't have the heart. See, God's focus has always been your heart. It's always been my heart, and then it's never changed. Do you want to know the kind of heart that God wants from us, from people? I'm going to I'm not going to read it but Psalms 51 when you get a chance I would encourage you to jump into into that book and read it and it gives you great insight of of what God wants from us as his people. See if we proclaim to be Christians and we sin and we mess up God wants us to turn away from sin, turn away from any any feelings that we have when we know like, man, yeah, I messed up. When the Holy Spirit convicts us, we're supposed to follow that conviction. That's actually a gift from the Holy Spirit. So God wants you to turn away from whatever it is and turn your heart to him. That, my friend, is not a hypocrite. Sinning and making a mistake that is not hypocrisy, according to Christ. A righteous person falls seven times, but gets back up again. Just because you fall does not make you a hypocrite. It's about what you do next that matters. See, let's see what the dictionary even says about a hypocrite. So the original meaning of the Greek word, it means stage actors, one who wears a mask to play the part. Here, once again, Jesus addresses this with the elders of the synagogues and the temples of his time. Let's read it. Mark 7, 1, 9, 1 through 9. Now, when the Pharisees gathered to him with some of the scribes who had come from Jerusalem, they saw that some of his disciples ate with hands that were defiled, hands that were unwashed. For the, You see, I want to stop right there. Just because these traditions, it really wasn't anything to do with with their hearts it was more of an outer thing because it bothered them that he that they weren't doing the, these things that they thought were right and it bothered them for the pharisees and all the jews do not eat things that were defiled that is unwashed for oh sorry for the pharisees and all the jews do not eat unless they wash their hands properly 
holding to the, to the tradition of elders. And when they come from the marketplace, they do not eat unless they wash. And there are many other traditions that they observe, such as the washing of cups and pots and copper vessels and dining utensils. And the Pharisees and the scribes ask him, why do your disciples not walk according to the tradition of the elders? But they eat with defiled hands. And he said to them, well, did Isaiah prophesy of you hypocrites? You see, that's the word. He uses it again, and it's not towards what we in our culture we think people who do certain things that like that just don't jive with us or whatever that we call them hypocrites but it's really for people who trust in themselves and look down on others for doing whatever other things that's who jesus calls hypocrites and that's a good heart check for us is that when we make a mistake we repent from it we turn to christ and we don't look down on others for whatever things that they do right so let's um, not be stage actors like it says in, in the Webster's Dictionary. Let's have true hearts. So read Psalms 51. When you get a chance, you guys are going to love it. All right? Well, God bless you guys. I hope that blessed you. You guys have a good week.